After you've gone through and created your AWS account, we can actually uh, log into your console. So console.aws.amazon.com. Once you've logged in to AWS, you'll be presented with the AWS services portal. And from here, we can click on EC2. EC2 is essentially what allows us to launch virtual machines. It's a part of the compute section here. And opening up EC2, you'll be presented with the EC2 dashboard. This will show you how many instances do you have running, uh, how many actual uh, images do you have inside of your AWS account, etc. For us, we want to actually launch a new virtual machine that will allow you to complete the class exercises. So, to do this, you'll click on the Launch Instances button in the dashboard. You're welcome to also go into the Instances tab listed off to the left. Clicking on this, you should go to Launch a New Instance, or Launch Instance right here. It'll ask you essentially, how do you want to create your instance? Where are you going to grab it from? Now, you probably don't have any uh, images yourself if you're getting used to AWS. So under the AWS Marketplace, we'll actually be able to search for a virtual machine that will fit our purposes. We're going to ask you to launch a CentOS 7 virtual machine for this class. Although you should be able to complete the exercises as well uh, with a Red Hat uh, Enterprise um, image. And uh, you could do, again, Red Hat Enterprise 7.2. So whatever you'd like to do here, I'm going to demonstrate launching a CentOS 7 image. So that's what I'll have you look for. And the very first one available here, CentOS 7 uh, by CentOS itself. It's free tier eligible, so you could essentially launch this instance and leave it running for 24 hours for a year for free if you've never used an AWS account. So clicking on this image, I'm actually going to go through and launch it or set up launching this instance. So, clicking on the Select option here for CentOS 7, we can actually go through and set it up. Now, if you are going to try and uh, do this for free, I recommend using the T2 Micro Free Tier Eligible option. Essentially, this will allow you to run one instance under T2 Micro for free for a year if you choose to do so. So, general purpose right here, T2 Micro should be fine for completing our class exercises. We won't need a whole lot of computing power. If you want better performance, you're welcome to select something like T2 Small or T2 Medium, but I'm just going to select T2 Micro General Purpose here. Next, under Configure Instance Details, it asks how many instances you would like to launch. Now, for the second half of this course on using a Chef server, we're going to have you launch up to three virtual machines for those exercises. So keep in mind, as we get to that point in the videos, you'll be launching three virtual machines to actually step through the rest of the exercises, and that will cost you money, um, unless you choose to go with the Vagrant and VirtualBox free option in the previous video. For our case, though, we're going to launch one instance right now for us to configure and set up directly, but in the future, you may go through this process for up to three virtual machines. We'll select one instance here that we're going to launch, and next, under the Add Storage option, it asks you what type of hard drive you would like to use. What type of storage option? You can leave this at the default general purpose SSD, and it'll have no problems with the exercises. I recommend clicking this Delete on Termination button to delete the hard drive when you kill or destroy the instance. If you do not check this uh, box, you'll have to go through and also manually delete the uh, volume for this particular instance once you stop it or delete it. So keep in mind, the hard drive and the actual instance are separate in this cloud provider. So, if you click the Delete on Termination button, when you destroy the virtual machine, the hard disk is also deleted. Next, under Tags, you have the option to name this instance. And this just allows you to keep track of it and name it easily. I often recommend naming it according to the date here. So I might name mine 17th of December 2016. And that way, essentially, if I uh, go through and launch a multiple VMs, I know how long they've been running. For my case, I'll just call this CentOS 7. Next, under the security group, this is probably the most important part to think about here. We want to be able to access our virtual machine. So we have to ensure that, for instance, SSH is available to us. So there's a couple other rules you might consider adding here. Um, we'll create a new security group for this virtual machine, and we'll ensure that I can SSH into this instance. For source, select anywhere, meaning anywhere in the world I can access this instance. 
the rest of the settings for SSH are fine. We'll SSH in on port 22. Next, I'll add an additional rule. And I'm going to ensure that I can hit this instance on port 80. That way, if I spin up an Apache web server, I can view what's being served on port 80. So I'll select custom TCP rule, and for port range, you'll put in 80 to ensure port 80 is up and running and available to us. For the source, select anywhere again. Finally, the last rule we'll have you add is for uh, HTTPS. So clicking add rule and selecting the rule type, select HTTPS uh, to ensure we can actually hit our uh, instance on port 443. And again, you could select anywhere here. So these are the options I'd like you to enable for the security group for this machine. Again, this ensures that we can SSH into it, that you can hit the instance on port 80 and uh, port 443. Finally, you'll click review and launch here, and you'll get the option to launch your machine. And you could ignore this warning to improve your security um, if you are opening up port 80 and port 22. This is because we enabled that wide open security group. Finally, clicking launch here, it asks you to think about how you're going to connect to this instance. If you've never done this before, you should be aware that we're actually going to connect to this virtual machine using a uh, public-private RSA key pair, or a PIM file, a security key. And essentially, it's asking us to choose a security key that you have access to. If you've never done this before, you'll want to create a new key pair for this instance. Otherwise, you can select an existing key pair you have access to. Under Create New Key Pair, I'll go ahead and type in the name of the keys themselves that I would like to use. And I'll go ahead and create a key called CentOS 7 for this exercise. I'll then download the key pair. If you already have one that's named it, you'll select a different name. So I'll call mine CentOS, and I'll download my key pair. This will download it to your downloads directory that's called CentOS.pem. And at this point, I'm ready to launch my instance. Now keep track of this key. Without it, you will not be able to log in to your virtual machine. Your instances are now launching. And scrolling down, you can click on the View Instances button to take you back to that tab before, which will show you the status of this virtual machine.